Hi there everybody. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful crunch stitch. Now the crunch stitch is a really beautifully simple two row repeat but you get the most amazing texture as well. So I'm hoping that the camera is picking up that lovely texture. So it's completely reversible as well and I love that little line that you get through on your colour changes. I think that looks really pretty. So yeah, completely reversible. It's a two row repeat and it would make the most beautiful baby blankets or really large blankets or even washcloths and things which is exactly what this one is going to be eventually. So you can use any yarn, any size hook that you like and as I say it's a two row repeat and do remember to subscribe to my channel now if you don't already to keep up to date with all of my weekly tutorials. But let's just crack on with this gorgeous textured crunch stitch. So we're going to start with a foundation chain in an even number. So as wide as you want your project to be, so long as it is an even number. So yarn over and pull through. It's one, two, three and four. So just chain the width of your project. So here now we've got our foundation chain. I've just done 40 with a 5mm hook and that would be a really great size for a washcloth or something similar but obviously you just chain to whatever size you require. So now we're going to work back along this foundation row and we're going to start in the second chain from the hook. So the second chain is this one because this is one and this one is two and so you're going to insert your hook into that second chain and you're going to slip stitch, so you're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops that are on your hook. Now you may want to pop a stitch marker now into that stitch so when we work back along in a moment you will know exactly where your final stitch needs to go. In the next stitch we're going to do a half treble crochet, so remember I'm always working in UK terms here, so in the US this is your half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over and pull up. You'll have your three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and that is your half treble. Into the next chain now you're going to slip stitch. So again yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And in the next, a half treble. Again, yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over and pull up, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And you're just going to alternate that all the way along, so slip stitch, half treble, slip stitch, half treble. And I will meet you as you get to the other end in just a moment. So I'm almost back along now and in your very final stitch you should be putting a slip stitch. So you should finish on the slip stitch just like we started with the slip stitch. So when you turn it over you should be getting a nice little bit of texture already. So we're now going to turn our work. And now we're basically going to alternate between those two stitches once again but doing a slip stitch on top of the half treble and a half treble on top of a slip stitch. So we finish with a slip stitch and so into this very first stitch where we've just come up from. So if you move that working end out of the way you can see the stitch just here. So you're going to insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull up and yarn over, pull through both. And then this stitch now has got two vertical parts to it. You're going to go behind the one nearest your working end, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through both. And that just gives us a half treble stitch but without having to do a chain two and leave a gap. So that is that first stitch worked as a half treble. So your next stitch now should be the top of the half treble from the previous row. So into that stitch, go through the whole of the stitch and get that V 
on the top of your hook and slip stitch. And then again, half treble in the top of the slip stitch from the previous row. So they're always a little bit tighter to work, obviously, with being a slip stitch. But that is how it will make it a bit more obvious as to which stitch is which, because the half trebles where you put your slip stitch are going to be much easier to work into than the slip stitches. So half treble in the next and slip stitch in the next. So again you're simply going to work that all the way along and I will meet you there in just a moment. So we're getting towards the end again now. I've got two stitches left to work into. I've got that half treble and that very first slip stitch that we did. So if you popped a stitch marker in there it should be nice and obvious for you. So I'm just going to do my slip stitch and then my half treble into that very final stitch. It is going to be fiddly. But there we go. So that is how you should be looking now. And this next row now is the second row of the two row repeats. So that row we've just done is row one of the repeat and this next row is row two. So we're going to chain one this time and turn. And we're going to ch do a chain this time purely because you can't really slip stitch up in the way that we half trebled up previously. So I've chained one and turned and into the very first stitch here. So basically right at the base of where we are now, you're going to insert your hook and slip stitch. And again, you may want to pop your stitch marker into that stitch that you've just created. And then in exactly the same way as before, we are going to half treble into the next stitch, which will be the slip stitch from the previous row. And slip stitch in the next, which will be your half treble. And again, continue that all the way along and you should be finishing with a slip stitch on top of that final half treble at the other end. So that is once again where I will meet you in just a second. I've worked my final half treble and then you can see I've got this final stitch just here to work into, which I will pop my final slip stitch into. So that is how you should be looking. You should have all kinds of beautiful texture going on now. And that is your two row repeat. So you'll have one where you start with the slip stitch and one where you start and finish with your half treble. Now, when it comes to changing colors, I would personally do it on a row where you are finishing with a half treble, purely because it is so much easier to pull the yarn through on a half treble stitch than it is to pull through the yarn on a slip stitch. So what I'm going to do is just work one final row now so that I can start and end with the half treble and I will show you if you need it how to change colour at the end of a half treble row. Here we go, so I'm just at a point now where I can change colour. I've done my half of my half treble so I've stopped at the point where I've got my three loops on the hook and then I'm going to grab my yarn and pull it through those three loops. Chain one and at this point you can snip off your original colour and I like to tie my ends together and then you can simply turn and work that slip stitch into the top of that stitch as normal and then half treble in the next and you'll be able to just work that then all the way along as you were before and you'll have a nice smooth neat colour change. So there we can see now all of that beautiful texture that this stitch is working up and it's totally reversible as well. But that is it for this one, I really hope that you've enjoyed it and please remember to do a thumbs up if you did 
and subscribe so that you keep up to date with all of my weekly tutorials. But I will see you for another one very soon. Bye for now.